How's it going, buddy? Welcome to episode 15 recap of Dungeons and Dragons Acquisitions Incorporated with I, Noble, who is uh, playing Bulgan. And I, Zydrate, who plays Aura. Well, we appreciate you all stopping by. It may be a little bit of time before the next episode. Uh, we'll get to that probably at the end, though, to cover that part. But, uh... Anyway, I guess I'll start off with uh, Aura and Bulgan. See the Traveler, and on closer inspection, Aura notices an Acquisitions Incorporated insignia on the bag on the uh, Traveler's side. This being the Traveler from the last episode, at the very end where uh, we noticed a strange man in very um, swashbuckler outfit uh, walking down the road in his messy red hair and mustachio. Anyway, the bag... Uh, is Acquisition Incorporated logoed. So, uh, we decide, well, Aura decides to test uh, the friendliness, and he seems friendly, using Psychic. Yeah. I, I cast out a message to the person while we're still in hiding, just for our own safety. Um, after getting a couple answers, we decide to step out of hiding, and we discuss with this person uh, the information that has gone down in uh, the town, our thoughts on it, uh, what we think may or may not be involved, just uh, pretty much everything in, in the sense of we tell them what all's been happening. Yeah, everything that we know from our point of view at least. Because other information's already been brought to the story head, but that was from the other group from the last episode. So we yeah. can only give a part of the information. And after we give this information, the Traveler, who, if I pr remember his name pronounced properly, it's Viari, says he needs to see our companion, Jule, because she is the one that was pretty much sanctioned as the messenger go-between to Omen. Um, and he was traveling and Omen apparently sent him a message about coming to check out the town. So we slightly begrudgingly agree to escort him to where we last remember seeing the other two of the group. Yes. Mentioning of a ogre was said, and the fact that we weren't running from the ogre, merely just tactically retreating. But, uh, anyway, we meet up with Jules and Riffin, uh, and share what we discovered uh, while we were separated near the end of the last episode. Yes, Which, uh, because... oh, sorry. Like, we ended up getting a little bit of information while we were gone from them. They got information while they were gone from us. So. And Rifton did an amazing tumble down the hill. Yes. A a an amazing tumble. <laughs> um, gotta go fast. Anyway. After, but... after that, uh, and also introducing Viari to the others... Uh, we discuss a bit of Yari's past and why uh, he was technically sent on, you know, helping us out was that he had lived in the town in the past and he was last there about a year ago. Um, but he seems to have good memory of the townsfolk and things. And... Another interesting key point is that he seems to have a small history with some sort of shady stuff, like in regards to how Aura has a little bit of history with shady stuff, but he has never been involved in a gang, at least not one like the Red Bandits who had been uh, the overtakers of the town five years ago. Which is a good point to bring up because he was in the same town the Red Bandits were, so it's a good question to ask to begin with so anyway. a little bit a little bit more talking takes place and he brings up acquisitions Inc uh, business 
and Aura states her stance and opinions on and thoughts on joining Ack Inc. And she has been she has been vocal in her stance and opinions with the group. And uh, so she brought it out there, respectively brought it out there, but brought it out there nonetheless. And uh, Bolgan also commented. Yeah, he's got some up, upholdings of the uh, group as well. It's like, for him, he wanted to be a mercenary. He didn't want to be a corporate worker. But I guess we get more into that kind of stuff later. Hmm. Anyway, so uh, we discuss on how to deal with the ditch and the church situation. And we begin, uh, uh, we find out, that is, that the old church has uh, been haphazard for a while. That's the old church has been falling down, but never actually falling down. Like, it's always in a constant state of, I guess, perpetual anarchy, I guess is the best way I could describe the church's constant state. They said that no matter how many people put things on it, it always ends up in the same state. And, uh... I have my own theories on to why that is. Yeah. And the new church, uh, is a renovated building that used to be the ogre's house, which makes sense because it's a large building. But, uh, we'd start discussing the, uh, more specifically on how to deal with the church and their workers particularly the other employees of the new facility, and if they might be innocent or not. And after that, we also try to figure out whether or not, okay, well, which is more important? Which do we go after first? Do we go after Ditch, or do we go after the church first? Because Ditch apparently comes out in the mornings to talk to the ogre. So if we deal with the church first, Ditch might catch wind and leave and we might not catch them. If we deal with Ditch first, depending on how soon after we deal with Ditch, try to deal with the church, the church might notice her being gone longer than usual. And so we were still trying to figure out plans and thoughts on that. Man, Whenever the session the ended. session ended. Yeah. So, a little bit up in the air. As previously mentioned at the beginning of the episode, uh, next episode may be sometime in January. We're not really sure when the actual starting time will occur. Yes, uh, there's going to be a hiatus because there there are some scheduling conflicts. Both for... the DM and a party member. So Yes, for part of the group, there are scheduling conflicts. Um, going into the holiday season and so it just makes sense for us to take a step back at this point and hopefully reconvene in January to have uh, some sort of proper conclusion to the events regarding this church and this ditch person mm-hmm well, since we covered the main part of the story, I guess it'd uh, be a good time to start bringing up our thoughts and opinions of what happened. And uh, I'm going to start with uh, jumping straight into our issues with the Ake group. Now, my big issue was the fact that we were worried there was an entire army. We were worried that, well, when I say an entire army, I mean two separate fighting groups that uh, were possibly going to cause harm to the town. We call for backup and we got one guy. I asked, hey, we told you there's an ogre here. Could you take an ogre on by yourself? And he's like, no. Do I look strong enough to take on an ogre? I'm like, then where's everybody else? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, obviously the ogre was real. So, I mean, the situation involving a possible larger group it was also real. So I felt like Ack Inc. really dropped the ball on giving us backup. Yes. Um, it It is difficult it is slightly frustrating um if you kind of think about this from the standing point of a, a character who has seen a lot of issues with 
um, with what seems to be the company. As far as our involvement with this company being the last couple weeks... I mean, uh, everything's happened within two weeks. Everything from the beginning of the uh, first session. Well, I mean, it's probably been longer than that because it took a few days for us to get to town and That's true. to uh, actually uh, find things out and whatnot. But it's been at least two weeks, but I wouldn't say it's been more than a month. Yeah, so I mean... This is a lot of company, uh, you know, seeing the background of this company in a month's time. It's like, wow. <laughs> and yes, we were concerned because there was definitely at least two factions uh, at work whenever we came out of the mansion. And we saw the cleanup crew who had the drawn Enterprise armor and then the other crew, whoever they were... Uh, that had less, you know, well put together armor, and it it was difficult because it could be a small faction of like twelve people to twenty people, who knows? But even if that is the case, then whoever initially caused the issue in the mansion, which we have found out that. Um, the ogre had an involvement in that as well as probably a group that uh, kind of beelined in after that to kill off the Akink people this was planned this was a you know very well thought out plan and if a group of who knows how many was able to take out a fairly large group of Acquisitions Inc. people that had been around for a bit longer than us... Clearly higher leveled and more of them. Then, of course, the four of us who have very little experience would be concerned of our own health and well-being as well as the health and well-being of the town citizens. Um that we would not have enough firepower and strength to be able to handle any one group, let alone, as we just saw, at least two groups. Yeah, for all we know, one of the groups might be completely gone. The drawn guys might have left, or the people from the other group may have left. Maybe that was the entire group. We don't know. The but other thing that was brought up, too, is... Thinking harder about it, Aura truly, you know, while we were in the midst of playing cards, in the midst of, you know, trying to decipher the Thieves' Cant letter a little bit better, thinking more and more on it, she didn't see any concrete evidence that tied drawn enterprises to the attack or any specific group, faction, or organization to the attack. We have no concrete evidence who did this. Yeah, everything we've seen almost feels like a setup to make them the fall guys. Yes, and that D could be ditch instead of drawn enterprises. We aren't 100% certain on that either. Yep. So there's a lot of uh, interesting, still up in the air things. Uh, there's also the fact that whether or not Drawn was uh, connected to Ditch to begin with. I believe not at this point. I think maybe they the used uh, Dr Drawn used Ditch as an informant, maybe, or someone from the church. But the only connections we have is that Drawn's money mm -hmm. was used to build up this other church which apparently was more or less a insult and slap in the face to Omen, who had faith in the other run-down older church. Yeah. Uh, it was more like, I bite my thumb at you, sir, sort of moment. Uh, the fact that they had cleanup crew that were coming in there to deal with stuff with the mansion, to me, strikes me as, okay, well, yeah, these people are gone now, let's just clean this up 
and move in mm -hmm. because it's no longer theirs. It was, you know, under the mayor's uh, financial whatever. And if we give them enough money, we can just come in here and us be the people here now. And the acting people don't really have claim on it because no one's here to claim it for them. That's how I see it. Yeah. Another problem I had was uh, with the idea of burning down the church. Because, I mean, at the very beginning when I had that alcohol-soaked alcohol rag, I kind of jokingly said, oh yeah, if we need to, we can make a distraction or burn down the church. And now it's like, oh, that's the real answer. I'm like, um, no, I don't really want to burn down a church. That's chaotic evil kind of stuff. Whether people I, inside or not. I mean, it depends. It, it depends. The destruction of a building is not necessarily evil. It's not inherently evil evil as and if we make sure that there's no one in the church when the building is destroyed then i don't see it as being evil i see it as being extremely chaotic which we are yes. but the plans right now are very wishy-washy they're very hard to pin down they're very hard to get started the ball rolling uh it feels like the discussion of the plan was a great majority of the time uh we spent on yesterday's session and trying to figure out okay do we deal with ditch first do we deal with the church first how would we deal with the church what if the sisters there are innocent fully and completely what if they think that Ditch is in the church whenever they're at all the stuff's going down? Do they know about her uh, quote unquote daily constitutional where she goes and talks to the ogre in the early morning? There was a lot of factors that were yeah. being brought up. There was a lot of questions being brought up as to how to deal with the situation. And it wasn't really resolved before the session ended. And on one hand, I think that that could be a good thing. On another hand, it feels like it would have been better for us to reach some sort of at least general rough draft of a plan mm -hmm. before we ended. But I understand that uh, it, it seemed like things were happening in the background with uh, either players or the DM or whoever. So perhaps you know the session to had to yeah. had to uh, end sooner than uh, we had anticipated. Yeah, but all in all, uh, it was a uh, roughly around a two-hour episode, but. We got a decent bit of information, but ended on a kind of a, a stale standing and not really having a set plan. Anything else that stood out in the episode to you? Not that I can really think of. Uh, as I said, the main thing was just us trying to plan the situation and... Uh, Viari in general was definitely something that stood out, but, you know, I feel that that was just because he was a new person, he was an NPC, and he was also trying to help us with suggestions and plan, but at the same time it felt like we were kind of going back and forth trying to figure out how to do this, or how to do that, or which one was more, uh more important in order to uh, not screw this whole thing up. Yeah, lives do hang in the balance in this uh, situation. But that's about all I got. Yeah, pretty cut and dry episode. Well, with that, I appreciate y'all stopping by and listening to our uh, little uh, background notes on uh, this last episode. For those who didn't want to sit around for the episode's length. And I appreciate y'all joining us. And uh, Thanks, guys. Yeah. 
We'll see you next time. No matter how long it is, we'll let you know. And uh, be safe. Bye-bye. See you.